Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the 2023 Ocean Gate Titan submersible disaster? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing by this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the incident, then offer my analysis. A company called OceanGate conducted expeditions to visit the final resting place of the British Olympic-class ocean liner RMS Titanic. This vessel was on its maiden voyage from Southampton, England to New York City when it struck an iceberg in the North Atlantic on April 14, 1912, at 11.40 p.m. The vessel sank on April 15 at 2.20 a.m. Over 1,500 people lost their lives, in part because the vessel was not equipped with enough lifeboats, and the lifeboats which were available were underutilized. There was room for almost 500 additional people on the lifeboats when the ship sank. At the time of its sinking, the technology to reach the wreckage was not available. Even when it became available, nobody knew exactly where Titanic had come to rest. In 1985, the wreckage of the vessel was discovered about 400 nautical miles from the coast of Newfoundland. It is on the ocean floor at a depth of about 12,500 feet. The sinking of Titanic is a disaster that stands out as a testament to the dangers of arrogance. At the same time, it has captured the imaginations of many people, which may explain why OceanGate conducted expeditions to the doomed ocean liner. To reach the depth of Titanic, OceanGate used a submersible named Titan. The names of both vessels were derived from the Titans of Greek mythology. This is the generation of gods preceding the Olympians. They were the gods of the underworld. Unlike Titanic, Titan was a small vessel. It was 22 feet long and weighed 23,000 pounds. It was designed to reach a depth of 13,000 feet. The submersible was controlled with a modified Logitech wireless game controller. Titan was always transported on another vessel, which monitored and supported all its activities. It was not a submarine that could leave port and reach a destination by itself, rather a submersible that was dependent on a support ship. Titan had room for five crew members, one pilot, one tour guide, and three paying passengers. These passengers, who OceanGate referred to as mission specialists, would pay $250,000 to join the expedition. They should have called them funding specialists. Each mission to see Titanic usually took about eight hours. The crew was bolted into the vessel from the outside on the support ship. There was no way to escape without returning to that ship. Before making the journey, passengers had to sign a waiver, which confirmed their understanding about the dangers. Titan was an experimental vessel that had not been approved or certified by any regulatory body. Going on the trip could result in physical injury, disability, emotional trauma, or death. That last word, death, appeared three times on the first page of the waiver. Now moving to the timeline of the incident. The first Ocean Gate expedition for the year 2023 started on June 16, when the research icebreaker Polar Prince departed from St. John's, Newfoundland. Titan was transported by this vessel. Polar Prince arrived at the dive site on June 17, and the dive operation commenced on June 18. Five people were aboard Titan, a 58-year-old British businessman, a 77-year-old former French Navy commander, a 48-year-old British Pakistani businessman, his 19-year-old son, and the 61-year-old pilot, Stockton Rush, who was the chief executive and founder of OceanGate. The dive started at 9 a.m. The passengers had 96 hours of breathable air on board the submersible. Every 15 minutes, Titan communicated with Polar Prince, but the communication stopped after 11.47 a.m. The vessel was supposed to resurface at 6.10 p.m., but it failed to do so. A massive search and rescue effort was launched, which included assets from the U.S. Navy, U.S. Coast Guard, U.S. Air National Guard, Canadian Coast Guard, and Royal Canadian Air Force. As impressive as these considerable assets are, the search is incredibly daunting for many reasons, 
including the depth, the weather conditions, the water temperature, and the fact that GPS does not work underwater. Searchers don't know if the Titan is on the ocean floor or closer to the ocean surface. At the time making this video, Titan has not been located. Sonar equipment had detected some underwater noise, which was incorrectly reported as banging by the media, but it wasn't clear where the sound came from. It seems likely that the noise was not related to Titan. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. What are the possibilities as far as the fate of Titan? There are essentially four things that could have happened. Catastrophic implosion, fire, the vessel was lost at sea, maybe even on the surface, or it is stuck in or on Titanic, like there was an entanglement. The submersible could have become trapped by various debris, like wire, cable, or twisted metal. If I had to guess, I would say that a catastrophic implosion was the most likely. That is, the pressure housing failed and water rapidly intruded into the vessel. This would not be a survivable event. The crew of the submersible would have been killed in an instant. This would explain why there was no type of distress message. Many other types of failures would still allow the crew time to communicate, but an implosion would not. The vessel was equipped with a number of backup systems, which would return it to the surface. This failure could also explain why none of those systems were activated, including the one passive system. Sandbags were connected to the vessel by hooks that dissolve after so many hours in the water. This would happen whether the crew was awake or not. With an implosion, the system would not work because the vessel would no longer have buoyancy. Item number two. I want to offer some perspective on how dangerous the ocean is at a depth of 12,500 feet. Pressure can be measured in a few ways, including atmosphere and pounds per square inch. One atmosphere is equal to 14.7 pounds per square inch. This is the pressure at the surface of the water, the pressure that people deal with every day. For every 33 feet of depth in salt water, one atmosphere is added. Put another way, every one foot of depth adds 0.445 pounds per square inch of pressure. At 12,500 feet of depth, Titan was exposed to about 375 atmospheres, or 5,500 pounds per square inch of pressure. It would not take a substantial mechanical failure to result in disaster at those pressure levels. Item number three. Concerns about the safety of Titan were voiced as far back as 2018. OceanGate received complaints alleging their lack of oversight and adherence to industry-accepted safety guidelines. There was also an employee who said he was fired after raising concerns that the company was not properly testing the carbon fiber hull. OceanGate operated Titan in international waters. Arguably, they were in a legal gray area as far as enforcement of safety rules. Stockton Rush, who again is the chief executive of OceanGate and the pilot of Titan, has argued that the pressure vessel of Titan was sound. The carbon fiber tube was carefully tested. Stockton indicated that as long as the pressure vessel did not fail, everything else could fail and the submersible would still be in good shape. He said there hadn't even been a major injury, let alone a fatality. Stockton criticized the safety regulations for submersibles, claiming that they stifled innovation. He falsely claimed that the people aboard Titan were the safest five people on the planet. It's almost like he was saying Titan was unsinkable, a claim echoed from the past when people bragged about RMS Titanic. I doubt that Stockton still feels the same way. Item number four, the plight of the Titan has attracted a lot of attention and mixed opinions as far as the behavior of the passengers, like some people feel badly for them and others don't. As far as the interest, I think this case is compelling because it involves a mystery, a rescue mission, and five exceedingly wealthy people who took an unnecessary risk. As a matter of fact, only wealthy people could afford to take this particular risk, which I think only heightens the sense that they took their chances willingly. They understood 
what they were getting into. Because of their actions, many other brave searchers are risking their lives to find them. They are engaging in a technically complex and hazardous retrieval operation that would normally involve months of preparation. Some people have asked, should these five people on Titan be permitted to jeopardize all those innocent lives? In my opinion, the authorities should certainly try to find the passengers on Titan, but I think moving forward, this type of hazardous dive needs to be better regulated. People cannot continue to put themselves in this type of situation where a high-risk rescue attempt is likely. In addition, there must be some way for the crew to get out of submersibles in the future. It's ridiculous that they are bolted in from the outside. I understand that it's cheaper than having to incorporate a hatch, but certain safety measures should never be cut. I think much of the blame for this disaster rests with Oceangate. The paying customers may have believed that the trip was essentially safe, despite the word death appearing three times on the first page of the waiver. Nobody reads the fine print on those contracts anyway. Item number five. The case of Titan speaks to several existential topics, including the attitude that people have toward risk. There are already people defending this type of expedition, essentially saying something like, if a person doesn't want risk, they should not get out of bed. Interestingly, not getting out of bed would actually carry significant risk. Activity is necessary for people to be healthy, but I understand the point they're trying to make. Essentially, these Titan proponents are saying that life is inherently risky, and it's important to have some excitement. Somebody has to be at the tip of the spear as far as scientific discovery and technological advancement. Innovators must take chances. The Titan detractors argue that the Titan crew is not advancing science or technology in any way. They were simply there as an adventure. They wanted to tell their family and friends that they saw Titanic in person. The risk was not only unnecessary, it was unwise. The passengers focused so intensely on what they wanted, they forgot or didn't care about what they could lose. In my opinion, it's fine to take risks to have fun, but those risks must be managed. Item number six, in the unlikely event that the crew encountered a disaster that left them alive and conscious for a while, like being trapped in or on Titanic, what would they have gone through as far as their mental health? For this item, I'm going to assume that the men did not ultimately survive. This is a scary topic for some people to contemplate. For example, those with claustrophobia have talked about how this case activates that fear. It causes vicarious claustrophobia. I think this is a terrifying scenario for anyone. There are various theories about what happened. The men panicked, attacked each other, lost control, broke down crying, or tried to break out of the submersible. I would be surprised if any of those things happened initially. These men, with the possible exception of the 19-year-old, were probably high sensation seekers without much of a panic response. They had learned to control their emotions to some degree. I imagine that they stayed strong and put on a good face for the 19-year-old who was probably terrified and looking to the older men for reassurance. Eventually, however, the panic would have set in for all of them. At that point, the thinking would move in one of two directions. They either accepted their fate or created a delusion of rescue, which they maintained until the end. Either way, it would have been a horrible way to die, not an outcome that could necessarily be appreciated after reading a waiver of liability. Now moving to my final thoughts. Stockton Rush promised his passengers a once-in-a-lifetime trip. Unfortunately, he was correct. The passengers of Titan probably shared the same fate as the passengers of Titanic. Their legacy is now fused with the legacy of that ocean liner. In my opinion, Oceangate simply did not do enough to mitigate the probability of a terrible outcome. They appeared to be inviting disaster. The arrogance of Titanic has repeated itself in the arrogance of Titan. In this way, Oceangate has plunged to new depths. Those are my thoughts on the 2023 Oceangate Titan submersible incident. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. 
Thanks for watching.